The 2020 running of the AMH Automotive Group Rally of the Bay was a very different event to previous years. With a worldwide pandemic closing borders and restricting travel, the Rally of the Bay needed a comprehensive COVID plan in place before it could even start. With rallying and other forms of motorsport in a forced break, the event attracted a seriously competitive field of over 80 cars. Headlining the entry list was Toyota driver and current Australian rally champion Harry Bates. Not being a round of the Australian Championship, Bates should be under no pressure to perform. No, well, there is always a bit of pressure, I guess, but uh, very much looking forward to getting out there today. The roads are in fantastic condition and it's going to be a great test for us. A lot of great drivers have come to Rally of the Bay this year and there's plenty of people in contention, so uh, whilst we are treating it as a bit of a test, it'll be uh, interesting to see where we stack up as well. The first stage was a 10.3 kilometre run along the old Princes Highway and Bates was immediately fast, setting a blistering time of 6 minutes and 35 seconds. Right along is 6 left, slight right 80, in short 4 right minus, and 4 left 80, 2 right half long. Bates' main rival would be Irishman and two-time Rally of the Bay winner Richie Dalton, who set his sights on three in a row. Yeah, look, I think it's it's going to be a tall order. Um, the level of competition here is is incredible. Um, just even last night, driving up by the service park, and it just along the road you see all the trucks, and it's like a round of a bloody Asian Pacific Rally Championship. It's it's incredible for a stay around, and it's it's really good to see um, you know the level of interest being the first rally back. To the, uh, how much every, you know, and everybody's put in the effort of just what it took for the organisers and the extra work they had to do and loop holes are, you know, extra hoops they had to run through just to, to make this happen, you know. So it's a big credit and patting it back to, to everybody to get to where we are now and it's, um, let's just uh, have fun and roll on today. Dalton and co-driver Dale Moskett were also fast over the first two stages but couldn't quite match the pace of the Toyota in front. Short five right. After two stages, they are in third and needed to claw back 18 seconds to jump into the lead. Very late, three right long, don't, nice and tidy, very late, three right but long. But stage don't. three would spell disaster. And they were out of the event. By the end of stage three, Harry Bates had a commanding lead and it was the second Toyota Team Yaris, piloted by Lewis Bates and Anthony McLaughlin, sitting in second outright. Short four right, 40. Don't fall that plus 80. Two right plus. Two right plus. Slotting into third was Victorians Aaron Windus and Daniel Brick in a newly built Subaru WRX. They were showing off some exuberant driving and after stage three Drury, they were 22 seconds off the lead. Aaron's father was in fourth. He was well aware that keeping in front of his young son was going to be a tough task. Well, but you having him in front of me, I tell you what, I like I still got bragging rights from test day, I was 0.2 quicker than him, but I reckon that'll be gone by the first K once he gets competitive, so... But no, nah, looking forward to it, mate. It's always a great battle between uh, Marin and I in the state championship in Victoria, so yeah, bring it on. Winder Senior was able to hold off Junior in the first two stages, but couldn't quite match his pace in special stage three, slotting in behind him, but there was just under five seconds between the pair. Tom Clark and Ryan Preston are once again throwing their hat in the ring for the MTA New South Wales Championship and they started their campaign a bit slowly. The best they could manage on stage one was 10th. 50, 6 left, break into 2 right. 6 left, break, 2 right, here it is, 2 right. 100, 8 left, into 6 left. 
but they quickly got back up to speed and had jumped four places to be in sixth after the second stage. Three left, opens four. Here's your three left, opens four. Fifty. Five right. Clark right would here. make up yet another position in SS3 to be sitting in fifth place outright. But it was a small margin, with Luke Kinnear and Andy Barandis in the Ford Fiesta R5 just four seconds behind after only 50 kilometres of competitive distance completed. Tony Sullins was the fastest of the two-wheel drive cars. After three stages, he was seventh and revealed his plans before the start of the event. Season-wise, I'm just planning on coming to every event and having fun. Um, for this event wise, I'm planning on going as well as I can, but the field is the best we've ever seen by miles. It's basically an ARC, and so I, I really don't know what to expect, but uh, yeah, my plans are to go flat out. It's had an oil change and bled the front brakes since Kuma, and that's it, we're here. I haven't driven it, I have no idea, I, like I've been eight months since I've been in the car, so the first stage will be very exciting. The first stage I've never done before from memory, and the second stage is not you know, it's a bit snotty and rough. Um, the third stage, Drury, will probably suit us. Um, River Road, we always struggle on with a two-wheel drive car, but uh, yeah, all, all in all, it's, the roads are fantastic, but speed-wise, we'll have a few ups and downs, I think. JJ Hatton and Nathan Long were another pair to struggle early. They equaled the time set by Clark in the first stage to be equal 10th. But unlike Clark, they struggled to get quicker and were eighth outright at the end of stage three. 60, two right plus you in. This is two right plus you in. And then power 200, nice and neat on the way out. Nathan Quinn is a former New South Wales state and Australian champion, and he's also the reigning East Coast Classic Rally Series winner. He knows he'll have a lot to do if he wants to win. Yeah, yeah, there's apparently a couple of good drivers here today, so um, no, it'd be good. I think it's fantastic for the state series to have the, the pedigree we have. I think it's uh, um, a reminder of you know how state rallying used to be, full of all the best guys and only the few make it to the top, so it's a, it's a, it should be an interesting day and I'm sure there'll be plenty of action. But Quinn was struggling with the car, and after three stages, he dropped back to ninth overall. Another crew with troubles was Clayton Hoy and Erin Kelly. They were seventh on the old highway, but then dropped down the leaderboard to be 29th after stage three with mechanical dramas. And rounding out the top 10 was Chris Higgs and Damon Nicoli in the Mitsubishi Lancer. They're another team with their sights on doing well in the MTA series. And they were off to a good start. The first of the classic cars was the Audi Quattro S1. Mal Keogh and Pip Bennett were also sitting 11th outright. There were quite a few other classic cars in contention for the East Coast Classic Series, including Tom Dermody and Owen Moynihan in a Ford Escort RS 1800, Clay Badnock and Katrina Kelly in a Toyota Celica RA40, Phil Thomas in another Escort, and the very rarely seen Lancia 037, driven by Gary Diverston. In the Battle of the Teenagers, Riley Walters in the Subaru WRX was the quickest, and remarkably, he was using the road book and not pace notes. He was also seated way down the order in 47th, so an extraordinary drive from him to be in 16th outright. 19-year-old Troy Dow was one place behind in 17th. He was just 1.5 seconds slower than Walters overall and 16-year-old Taylor Gill in his first ever rally and with seasoned co-driver Peter Harris sitting in, 
They were 20th, but only running on three cylinders. With four stages to come, anything can happen in this rally. So make sure you join us for part two of our review of the AMH Automotive Group Rally of the Bay.